Welcome to our lesson on heat transfer. Something the caloric theory did get right was that heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. That was not because of caloric particles, of course, but it was still a correct observation. Whenever there is a difference in temperature, heat will always flow from the object that has a higher temperature to one that has a lower temperature. And there are three ways this can happen. Namely, conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's take a look at this Bill Nye clip that shows you more about it. There you go. Thanks. Heat moves around the universe in three ways. So let's take a look at the part of the universe we call the uh, kitchen. These pancakes are touching this hot griddle. So heat can go directly from the griddle into the liquid pancake batter fast enough to turn the batter into a dry... Ugh. Pancake. Here we have fruit cooking over boiling water. The steam cooks the fruit all the way through. This fruit is doggone good on pancakes, and the steam makes it hot, hot, hot. This is called convection of heat. Here we have a flame, and we'll roast some marshmallows. The flame cooks the marshmallows without anything touching anything. This is called radiation. So those are the three ways that heat moves around the universe. Conduction, conduction of heat, convection, convection, and radiation, radiation. Mmm, not bad. Marshmallow fruit pancake order up. Conduction is the transfer of heat energy when two objects are in physical contact with each other. It happens because the vibration of the particles in the hotter object is transferred and passed along to the cooler object. In general, metals are the best conductors of heat energy, better than plastics and woods, as we see here in this clip. Hey, want to see heat conduction in action? Yeah. Well, get a bowl of hot water, stick a pad of butter on a metal knife, a plastic knife, and a popsicle stick. Then put a sugar cube on top. Heat energy is conducted up to melt the butter. Watch to see which sugar cube falls off first. The butter will melt off the one that is the best heat conductor. See? Well, what are you waiting for? Try it! Convection is the transfer of heat energy by whole movement of particles. It happens not in solids, but in liquids and gases. Let's take a look at this clip that shows you how it works. Here's a way you can see heat convection in your own home. All you need is a piece of paper cut in the shape of a snake. Yeah. Looks like this. It's a spiral cut out of a piece of paper taped to a plastic bottle cap. You tape a pencil to a tea towel bar that you might have in your kitchen. A what? Take the towel off. Then push a needle into the eraser end of a pencil and balance the plastic bottle top on the end of the needle. Put the toaster under the snake and turn it on. The warm air rises from the toaster and makes the snake dance. <laughs> That's convection. Not bad. <laughs> a heat pump is a device that takes heat from one area and moves it or pumps it to another area. An example of a heat pump is your refrigerator. When you take food and you put it inside the refrigerator, there is heat within that food. And so the refrigerator takes it and pumps it outside. That's why if you were to ever look at the back of a refrigerator, you will notice that those coils are warm or hot. It's because the heat that was within the fridge was pumped out to the back of the refrigerator. Let's take a look at this clip that shows another example of a heat pump. This is a heat pump. It can pump heat from inside the building out here into the environment or from the environment into the building. Of course, all this pumping takes energy and it comes from over there. So a heat pump is like an air conditioner and a heater in one. If it's a hot day, we want it to be cool inside the building. Well, the heat pump gathers heat up inside the building and forces it out into the warm environment. But what if it's a cold day and we want it to be warm inside the building? Well, there's enough heat energy 
out in the environment, even when it's cold, for a heat pump to gather it up and push it into the building. Isn't that wild? Isn't that uh, cool? <laughs> cool. <laughs> See? Yeah, the heat got pump. it. And finally, radiation. Radiation is the transfer of heat energy by means of electromagnetic waves. What are electromagnetic waves? Well, many examples include light, x-rays, radio waves, and microwaves, probably the one that you are most familiar with. A microwave machine uses microwaves to heat up the food. Let's take a look at this Bill Nye clip that shows you a little bit more about it. My name is Andy Jessup. I'm a scientist and I study heat. What we use is a special camera here, which is an infrared camera. It's sensitive to heat radiation. Our eyes are only able to see visual light, but this special camera can see thermal radiation. It's a map of temperature. The blue is cold and the red is hot. I'd like to show you how we can see radiant heat as it heats up an object. This is an infrared heat lamp. We have a piece of black paper here, and I'm gonna turn the lamp on, and as we watch the display, you can see that the pattern of heat is growing. It's getting hotter in the middle as the radiant heat is transferred from the lamp to the paper. Very cold things like liquid nitrogen at minus 200 degrees centigrade still emits thermal radiation. This now is how the imager sees something very cold even very cold material uh, cool. radiates some heat. You know, vacuums are fascinating. Like this thermos, it's a vacuum with one glass bottle inside of the other. And there's no air between the two glasses. Exactly. And since there aren't any molecules in a vacuum, well, none of the heat in the thermos can get out by conduction. So my tea stays icy cold because no heat is conducted into the thermos, and your tea stays piping hot because no heat is conducted out of the thermos. Well, actually, some of the heat does get out. I mean, even though we can't see it, the bottle my hot tea is in does radiate heat. And since heat can radiate through a vacuum, well, some of the hot tea's heat does get out. So my cold tea warms up a bit because heat radiates in from out here. Well, back to the old grind. Yeah, let's get this bad boy rolling. Hey, Bill, what are you doing? Keeping warm by the fire. But whatever side of me is facing away from the fire gets cold. Well, you know, Bill, a very hot object like that fire is radiating heat. Heat radiation is made up of waves, just like light, that race along at nearly 300,000 kilometers per second. This fire is radiating waves of infrared light. Heat waves. Yeah, and the hot air above the fire rises right. up the chimney. Sure, natural convection. Without it, chimneys wouldn't work. And the cold air that's flowing across the floor to replace the rising hot air makes my back cold. That's why we've got one of these. Huh. Hey, did you bring any marshmallows? Let's watch this clip that shows all three of them at work. And now, another episode of Hot Treats with your host, uh, hostess, Vivian Cupcake. Oh, why, hello there. I'm ever so glad you could join me today because the kitchen is such a wonderful place to learn about heat. Today we're going to cook with this metal baking pan and this glass baking pan. Say we pour half our brownie batter into this metal baking pan. This will be chocolatey and delicious. Uh, uh, careful. Mix it down. The tasty batter will turn into scrumptious brownies when heat from the heating element heats up the metal pan and the metal pan transfers its heat to the brownies. That's heat conduction. Conduction heats the glass baking dish too. But because the glass is clear, red light and infrared light, that's heat, passes right through the glass baking dish to heat the brownies. That's heat radiation. The metal pan isn't clear, so it reflects the infrared light. Heat radiation cannot heat up the brownies in the metal pan. 
That's why we cook our brownies for a longer time when we use a metal pan. Uh, hey, you want to, uh, uh, watch it. C careful now. And this is my favorite part of studying heat. Oh, that is hot. This has been another edition of Hot Treats with Vivian Cupcake. Well, that is the end of our lesson. See you in class. <laughs>